I'm Katrina Meta. I'm Tracy Sayer, and we are the co-founders of Women's Weekend Film Challenge, which works towards gender equity in the film industry through three programs. So first we have our in-person film challenge where we place professional filmmakers onto crews to write, shoot, and edit a short film in one weekend. And then we have our donation-based virtual workshop series. And finally, we have our brand new pilot accelerator geared toward emerging TV writers, which we're so excited to talk with you guys about today. Um, so some of you may already know us through our film challenge or our virtual workshop series or both. Um, but even if you participated in one or both of those programs, we really wanted to hold this virtual Q&A to give people a chance to ask us any questions that you have while you're filling out your application or preparing to do so for our brand new pilot accelerator because we know it's new. Um, and yeah, um, but before we talk more about the program, we're going to share some links and dates in the chat. Yes, and while we're doing that, um, I should mention you can add any questions that you have in the Q&A tab below, not in the chat, we won't see those. Um, and you can upvote any of the questions that you really like to make sure that we see those. Okay, so I am putting in some um, helpful links for our website um, about the accelerator program, our FAQ about the pilot accelerator, and our application for the accelerator as well as some upcoming dates. Do you wanna go through those quickly, Tracy? Sure. Um, Thursday, July 1st, just in a few days, that is our regular deadline. So if you apply by Thursday, that means that you will save the most. It's $65 for that application fee. Um, Wednesday, July 21st is the absolute final late deadline. You cannot submit after that date. Um, the cost for that one is $85. So there is a good incentive to make sure that you apply earlier. Um, mid August is when we will be announcing our semi-finalists. Late August is when uh, we will interview our finalists and early September is when our fellows will be announced. And we're going to go into a lot more detail on what all those announcements actually mean. So we're going to take a few minutes to give you the rundown of the pilot accelerator application process and the program itself. After that, we will answer your questions. So please submit your questions in the Q&A tab down below, not in the chats. Um, we have a lot of people in this info session, so we might not get to all of the questions, but we're going to try our best. Uh, so make sure that you upvote any questions that you really want answered, then we'll have an easier time finding those ones. Okay, so about the application. Um, right now we are accepting applications. As Tracy said, fees range depending on when you submit. So right now until this Thursday, um, July 1st, it's $65 and then it bumps up to $85 if you submit by the final deadline on July 21st. So our um, Women's Begin Film Challenge team and volunteer readers are going through every application and uh, we'll be selecting semi-finalists whose scripts will be read by industry judges for all listed on our website. Those include showrunners, co-EPs, um, development execs, TV writers for your favorite shows. So it's a really great group of people um, who really know what they're talking about. And from there, we will select finalists and we're going to be interviewing those finalists via Zoom in late August. Um, we will then announce six to eight uh, selected fellows in September, and those are the people who are going to participate in the program. So we're really looking for people who have complete, polished pilots ready to sell and who are ready to be staffed in a writer's room. So we're looking for people who are excited to dedicate a lot of time and energy to this, um, both in, in the program dates itself and in between and leading up to it. Uh, it will be an intensive time of getting your script and your pitch really polished and ready to go so that you can have successful meetings and pitches. Okay, so now for the program itself. Um, the six to eight fellows will get some homework once they're announced, which is a few weeks before the program begins. They will be reading each other's scripts, watching some of our past virtual workshops, preparing a ver ver verbal pitch, etc. Uh, we will be meeting 
during the program, we will be meeting from 3 to 6 p.m. Pacific, 6 to 9 p.m. Eastern. So make sure you are keeping track of those times in case uh, you live somewhere where those times are not possible for you. Everything is going to be live and you're expected to attend everything if you are a fellow. We should mention though too, that those times are subject to change. We're going to be having industry guests on a lot of them. So if those guests are not available at exactly those times, it might be shifted a little bit. Um, so yeah. But they won't change dramatically. So <laughs> if it's during your bedtime, just keep that in mind. Uh, those meetings will be on Thursdays and Fridays from September 16th to October 1st. During those meetings, we will bring in industry guests to give you advice, help you polish your pitch, and answer any questions you have. Uh, already, we have Elle Johnson, co-showrunner of Netflix Self-Made. She's going to be helping with your pitches. Um, we have speech coach, coach Samara Bay, whose clients include Gal Gadot and Rachel McAdams. She's going to be helping with the verbal pitch delivery. We have our entertainment lawyer, Anuj Gupta. Um, he will be providing legal information. We really tried to think of everything that you might need to go into those pitch meetings to make sure that you are nice and covered. So let's talk about these pitches that those fellows will have. So we have a ton of amazing studios, production companies, and producers who have already agreed to hear pitches. Um, including HBO, um, both their drama and comedy departments, HBO Max, also both their drama and comedy departments, Berlanti, Jax Media, Fable, Fernanti, uh, Element Pictures, Broadway Video, and Good Fear Content. So each of these companies has agreed to hear at least three pitches. Um, so we're going to be sending over the log lines to them before the actual pitch dates, which are right now scheduled for uh, October, I'm looking at my calendar, October 6th through 8th, but they might fall a little before or after. Um, and they're going to let us know in advance which of those pitches that they would like to hear. So of course, you know, this ends up being kind of a benefit that they're going to be choosing the ones that they really want to hear. So you know if you're chosen, they actually want to hear from you, they actually want to hear this pitch. And of course, you know, None of the people who are just developing dramas are going to want to hear comedies, et cetera. Um, so the goals, the goals of this program. Um, and before I say this, I just wanna mention, cause we have a lot of questions coming in already, make sure to upvote, upvote the ones that you really wanna hear the answers to. Um, so the goals of the program, of course, we would love if one or more of these um, fellows was able to sell a pitch. But that's, of course, not the only outcome that we're shooting for. Um, we're also hoping that some of the fellows could be hired as staff writers or support staff for existing writing rooms because of this program. Um, we're hoping even some semifinalists who get read by industry judges might impress those judges enough that they might want to call them in for a meeting and uh, speak to them further. So, you know, if you're going to be pitching, if you're accepted as a fellow and you're going to be pitching to a producer um, who at this time isn't super interested in the pitch itself, but is really interested in you and loves your voice, and they have a writer's room in the future, potentially that's something that they might consider you for. Um, again, just getting um, our fellows' feet in the door uh, of the industry. So again, maybe a me meeting doesn't lead to a sale at this time, but the production company likes you enough that they want you to reach out whenever you have your next project ready, or you remembered when um, someone is hiring for a writer's room. And uh, one of the biggest goals is that our fellows will all be making really great connections with other writers in the program. Um, and all of these writers are people who are talented and moving up the ranks of the industry. So one of the biggest benefits is those peer connections. And those are the people who in the future will be hiring for writer's rooms, or they will remember the great notes that you gave and, and really think that you'd be a great fit for a room in the future. There are the people that you can ask to read your script the next time you have a project because you know that they give, they give really solid notes. Um, they're the people who can refer you to their representation um, when you're looking for that. They're the people that you might end up collaborating with. So these connections might actually be the, the most valuable in the long run. 
So that's one of the reasons that we have our really intensive schedules and require 100% uh, attendance because we really want our fellows to get to know each other. All right, so we are going to start answering audience questions. If you do have any more questions, make sure you're putting them in the Q&A tab. Um, I just want to also add that this program was um, a natural growth from our virtual workshop series. We saw that so many people in our community were interested in breaking into television writing and, and trying to sell their pitches. And we were listening to all of your comments during those virtual workshops and seeing what people needed the most help with, uh, getting those con industry connections, getting help with pitches, making sure that things look professional and are up to standard. Um, so that is what we are strived for with this uh, new pilot program. Let's talk about this first question um, from Elliot. Will the project be viewed on a rolling basis? Like the sooner we submit, the better or viewed after the last deadline? We are reviewing everything that comes in. Um, I would definitely suggest submitting earlier than later, just because we're going to have such a huge influx at the very end, and we have to have a fast turnaround to get all the scripts ready for the, our judges. So it's always better to submit earlier. That's why every kind of writing, every writing contest has it's cheaper to submit earlier on because everyone wants you to do submit earlier on. Um, but yeah, we are looking at every single script that comes in. We are reading it. We have set, we have 25 readers on board with us just to get through the first phase. So everything is being considered fairly. Yes. Um, I, I would say if you feel that you're not ready, I mean, we want you to submit as polished as possible. So if you feel that that's, it's as polished as possible toward the end, then sure, submit it then, you'll get a fair, you'll get a fair read. Um, but yes, if you can submit earlier, if you're ready earlier, always with contest, it's probably good to do that. Megan Lopez asks, will you seriously consider people who don't have any big writing credits? Yes, for sure. I mean, this is who we're really looking to help because we know that people are really struggling to get their foot in the door. We know that you can't get a writing credit um, without a writing credit on, on TV shows, essentially. So it's really hard to break in. And that's the bridge that we're really trying to gap here. So yes, if you don't have big writing credits, don't worry at all. We're really looking at the talent of the script, the, uh, the originality of the idea, all this kind of stuff. Um, and don't worry if you have not been staffed on TV yet. Kins asks, would submitting a pilot written in a class slash as a student hurt your chances, increase them? Any preference? I see it's an option when submitting. We are requiring everyone to submit a pilot. Um, you need to submit a script to be considered. We are basing our, all of our um, selections off of the strength of your writing and um, the, the way that you pitch your pilot. Um, so, if you have a script, no matter what you wrote it for, if it was for class, for anything, if it's really good and you want to sell it or you think that that's the perfect um, way to introduce yourself to the industry, then definitely submit that. The question about is this a student project is something that's solely like Film Freeway asks that for everybody automatically um, for every everything that's not a question that we actually added in there. So we're not, we don't even look at that part. Muggs asks, how extensive should the pitch book book, book be? And should it be more of a pitch or a vision? Um, people are submitting really different kinds of, um, of pitch decks and lookbooks for this. Um, a lot of people are not submitting at all, really. It's up to you, um, but I would say, however, much you can put into it, do that, you know, um, anything that would help get your vision across, whether it's the visuals, the tone. I mean, some people you can really see from the images they choose that they have a really cohesive tone for what they're trying to share with us. Um, some people share, and this is actually the most helpful thing, I think, when we're looking at um, pitch deck is the season arc. And often if they say like a a little vision of what season two or season three would be, that's really helpful. It's especially helpful if we read the log line and maybe we're like, hmm, 
could this keep going after the first season? If we see that you've thought that out, um, that's going to be really, really helpful for us if we're kind of on the fence with, could this continue? So yeah, it's really more of a vision. Um, get your vision across. Don't and don't slap together something just to submit it for this. Um, we can tell when something is just like a bunch of pictures thrown, vomited on a page and not very thought out. It's better to just not submit that at all than to submit something that is not ready to be seen as a pitch. Um, yeah. Pitch book. But if you're like, I, I'm not a graphic designer, I don't know, but I do know what my next arc of the season or the next seasons, I mean, even submitting like a typed up page um, could help if, if that's something that you have um, that would be helpful to, for us to know. But yeah, don't like slap something together just for the heck of it um we be because we really want people who we feel are prepared okay the uh, next question um lisa and leanne patrick both asked can you submit a pilot written with a male co-writer yep you can absolutely submit a pilot written with a male co-writer um men are welcome to apply as well we are open to all genders um, uh, Mindy Strauss asks, does the main character of the pilot need to be a woman? Uh, no, it does not need to be a woman. Um, we do ask a question on the application. How does this project advance um, the representation of women and non-binary people on screen? So if you feel that, okay, well, you know, I have a really ensemble cast of characters that I is bringing forth a lot of uh, women and or non-binary people, and I want to share this. Um, definitely feel free to submit. If it's an all male cast, um, if you know, share with us why you feel like this is helping representation on screen. Okay. Um, Chris Bosley says, questions by the way, everyone. Thank you so much for submitting these. Yes. Um, Chris Bosley says, Film Freeway has a separate writer statement section for the submitted project in addition to WWFC's own application questions. Is that considered with my application as well? Okay, here is a golden tip for everyone. Make sure that you are listening. And this is advice that we share um, after our film challenges when we host a um, submission workshop on how to submit for film festivals. Answer every single question you can. Fill out every part of the application, anything on Film Freeway, fill out your entire profile. It just helps you stand out. It makes you look prepared, really motivated. Any extra information we can get from you really helps us in the decision-making process. So we know that it can take extra time. It can feel tedious. It can feel like you're just like repeating yourself everywhere but it just, it makes you look better as an applicant to fill out everything. Libby Gardner asks, I noticed most of the judges reading the semifinalists are drama writers. Are you looking for dramas? Will comedy pilots be a disadvantage? That's a really good question, Libby. So we are looking for both dramas and comedies and we are still gathering our judges. And right now we're specifically looking for some comedy writers to fill that out. So, um, on our side with our volunteer readers, we have some people more geared for drama, some people more geared for comedy. Um, so no, you won't be at a disadvantage and we are still adding more judges to the list, which will be hopefully up on our website shortly as soon as we finalize them. Yeah, we really are looking for kind of a half and half comedy and drama for our um, final fellows. Rachel says, what level of experience do you expect your fellows to already have? We are not expecting anything from across the board. We know that everyone has different experiences. What we are looking for is amazing writing, amazing skill, someone who has taken this very seriously, um, someone who has proofread their script. That is very important to us. When, when there are typos on the very first page, it just makes it seem like you don't care at all. Um, so we are really looking for quality. We are looking for a new voice. We are looking for interesting stories. We really are not um, holding 
anything against you if you don't have um, a, a degree in writing, if you don't have certain connections, if you don't have experience in the writer's room, we're just looking for talent. Uh, Olivia Holler asks, what are you looking for most in the why the script now section? How much do you want to know about our resume um, as writers in the initial application? So um, we really want to know, I guess with why this script now, and I think that this is something that will be really relevant for the people who are pitching too, like why is this something that should be on TV right now and why are you the person to tell this story? Some people are telling us in that section that it's inspired by an experience they had or a family member had or that um, something about their identity or their experiences in the, in the world they have seen on TV that it's not being represented currently and they've really sought to, to bring that to the forefront. Um, we're really looking for answers like that. We want to know why it's relevant today, you know, thematically or the types of characters or the representation or anything of that sort. Um, because that really tells us, you know, that you've thought about why it should be on screen right now. And this is a really common question you'll get when you're pitching. So it's really good to have a, an answer for this. <laughs> be prepared for that. Elliot Francis Flynn says, my twin and I are a writing duo. When you say that number of fellows, is that total projects or literal people? Oh, good question. Um, that is total number of projects. So... If we have, if we accept six projects and they all have co-writers, that would be 12 fellows. Leanna Woodley asks, are there genres that will appeal more so to the judges than others, i.e. will a children's show compete as well as a streaming drama? So um, Leanna, I would say you should look at who we currently have on board to hear pitches. Right now, none of those, um, are really focused as much on children's shows. Um, we might be adding to those, those studios, production companies and producers in the future, but really you can Google what, what, are, all of these, um, what are all of these people doing? And can you picture them if you were selected as a fellow? Can you picture them selecting your log line out of the six to eight um, as someone that they want to take a meeting with because they can see it being part of their personal lineup? Jolene says, I saw in the description that it was for a narrative pilot, but it didn't say narrative on Film Freeway. Can you clarify what qualifies as a pilot, what genre, etc.? We are not accepting documentaries, so it needs to be a fictional story, if that helps. Um, and what qualifies as a pilot, it is the very first episode of a TV series. Yes, yeah, so we are looking for something, again, scripted. Uh, we're, we're not looking for a web series, you know, we're looking typically, uh, you know, show these, these production companies and studios, they're looking for like half hour comedy format, hour long drama format. People have played with that in the past. Um, that's not like a hard and fast rule, but it's certainly, you know, it's certainly a guideline to look at. We're not looking for spec scripts, um, scripts of films that are TV shows that are already on the air for you writing a spec script of a future episode, film, short films, partial drafts, um, web series, um, no animated series, or only looking for those scripted um, live action, but that can be an enemy genre. Uh, okay, so CJ asks, the application asks to list your website. Do we have to have one? Will the quality of the website be part of the judging? No, you don't need to have a website. Um, and we know that like most people don't have a website for a show that they're writing. It can be just like your personal website, but uh, it is not required for the application. Jess Berry asks, does the project need to be registered with the WGA? Um, no, it does not need to be. That's all up to your personal comfort. We always recommend that, but um, it is not re a requirement. And we should say that um, we are only sharing the scripts in our trusted community. We are not sharing them online. We are not, this is not open to the public. So we are taking your 
um, your IP, your creations very seriously and carefully. Um, but yeah, we do recommend um, re registering with the WGA if that makes you feel more comfortable. Anahid asked, is there a preference for the half hour or hour long pilot format for the application? There is no preference for that. Uh, we do tend to follow the standard guidelines of a half an hour being for a comedy and an hour long being for a drama. Um, it would be strange if we, when we get a, a comedy script that is 80 pages long, it does seem a little off. Um, but if that's addressed in the application, then uh, and it's clear that the writer knows why it's that length, we will give it um, more, more consideration. And there are certainly dramedies that are in each of those um, half hour or hour long formats as well. Yeah, um, but we want to know that you know that it's a dramedy, that you don't think that this is a sitcom that is 80 minutes long. Uh, Ali and Reagan ask, can we submit more than one pilot slash application? Uh, yes, you can. Um, they will all be in separate applications for each one. Um, Paula asks, would it be possible to apply with a strong pitch deck instead of a pilot? No, we are requiring pilots to be submitted. So you can submit your pitch deck, but we need to read the script because this is based on the quality of your writing. Um, as we mentioned, one of our goals is that people get hired in the writer's room and you get hired based on the quality of your writing. And so we really do hope that um, we're finding amazing writers based on those scripts. Um, Beluze, Beluzo, I hope I pronounced that okay, uh, asks, can we submit a video thematic clip as part of pitch deck, of the pitch deck? Yeah, I mean, some pitch decks have places where you can click um, something and it plays. You can certainly do that. Um, however you want to present your pitch deck, you can present your pitch deck. Um, we should say for something, we have seen a couple people, um, this is a separate thing, but I'll mention it anyway. We have seen a couple people, um, instead of putting a PDF, just put like a final draft thing for their script itself. Definitely don't do that because not everyone um, who is, you know, in our reading team necessarily has final draft or is using the computer where they have final draft. So definitely submit um, submit things as a PDF when you're submitting your script and yeah. your, um, yeah. And it also just protects your work better to submit something as a PDF rather than a, a final draft final draft file. Um, Cecile Garcia asks, will budget of the pilot be considered? Uh, it will not be considered for um, the application process. We are, you're going, if you are accepted as a fellow, you're going to be pitching to the biggest studios and production companies in the world. And so they have the budgets to accept these pilots if they are really interested in it. So I would not be concerned about the, the budget. Liz asks, is there the ability to update your submission if say you apply on July 1st, but make some tweaks. All the questions keep moving. <laughs> um, tweaks before the final deadline. Uh, so I don't even think that this is a possibility through Film Freeway to update your application after it's been submitted. Um, this is our first time working with Film Freeway. Do you have any sense of that, Tracy? I don't think that you can tweak your application after you hit submit, so make sure that you are ready. We also are looking at things as they come in. So it might have already sort of been processed by the time you kind of go around to making tweaks. So yeah, definitely make sure that you're ready. Um, Ray asks, how many pilot slash application submissions are you anticipating? Um, we have gotten well over 200 so far in the first week. And we are assuming that we'll have at least 500 in total. So. The odds are pretty good compared to a lot of other contests out there. Um, Maggie asks, some screenplay competitions require us to remove our names from the title page before submitting. Is that required? 
Um, no, we are getting applications, some with names on cover page, some without, and we're not really um, paying attention to that either way. Yeah, we're looking, we're seeing your bios and, and everything, so nothing is blind about the application. Next question, um, Lucia says, if you are chosen and submit a pilot, is there a chance for producing your work with HBO, et cetera? So we submit all of the log lines of our fellows to the companies, production companies, studios, producers that have signed on to hear pitches. Each of those have agreed to hear at least three pitches of our six to eight fellows. So um, if HBO reads your log line and they are interested in it, then you have a meeting with them, you pitch to them. If they love your story and they want to work with you, then the rest is up to you and HBO. <laughs> um, there are so many different steps to this. You know, there's getting a meeting is, is a whole step about getting your foot in the door. So that's where we're trying to get people. Getting it sold is, you know, you don't know if that's a result of the meeting or not. It could be sold. It could not be sold. Once it's sold, maybe it's developed. Maybe the project is put down at some point. After it's developed, it has to be picked up. So there are so many steps to this and there are no guarantees at any point in the process. Um, but we're trying to open that door for people and get people in the door. Um, let's see. Um, Anais says, if selected, do participants need to be available other days of the week or just on Thursday and Friday for the live sessions? Um, you only need to be available on Thursdays and Fridays for the live sessions, but there will be homework before the um, fellowship begins and there will be homework um, each week, basically um, revising things, um, preparing things. So th there is quite a commitment involved, um, but you don't need to be available for meetings or anything like that. Mimi asks, uh, what do you mean by the credit section? I thought it's for works we sold or published but it says add a person. So now I'm wondering if you mean a writing partner. So the credits section maybe doesn't really apply to scripts. That's another thing that's just kind of built in the film freeway um, format. They have, um, they have people submitting films through film freeway as well. And so sometimes with a film, you wanna say, here's the director, here are the lead actors, all that kind of stuff. For this, it doesn't really, um, it doesn't really apply. Okay, um, Adyaka says, I was ex so excited to apply for your program, but after reading the submission release waiver, I have concerns about if and how me or my work will be protected during this process. If this is a standard way of working, I wonder how WWFC can model a different way of engaging with slash supporting emerging artists by veering away from inequitable power dynamics in the industry. Um, I hear you. This is the industry standard to have a submission waiver. What happens is these companies are, and our industry readers, they're putting their careers in jeopardy by reading scripts if there isn't a submission waiver. Because what happens is they have tons of projects in the works and we're already seeing this happen where we get submissions where we can't tell the difference between two or three different submissions because they're so similar. And if we have an industry judge who reads a script and she says, ooh, I already have a project that's very similar to this, she could be in a position where she's worried that, she, that that writer will end up suing her because they think that she stole their idea when in actuality, they already had this project in the works. So the submission waiver is the industry standard so that people in higher positions can put themselves in this vulnerable position of reading unprotected IP. Mm -hmm. um, I don't see a different way of, I, I like this idea of how WWFC could model a different way, but I don't know how that would work right now, but it is something that we would hear ideas about, but we, we, it, it is necessary in order to get these people in the room. We need to also protect, protect them. Yes, this is the reason why um, so many people, you can see on their Twitter bios or whatever, 
no unsolicited uh, submissions. They are, again, like Tracy said, protecting themselves and the, the existing work that they already have. Um, so yes, it's definitely something that you need to check off as you submit your application. Uh, so S.A. Brown asks, if selected, will we need a complete season done by September? Uh, no, you will not. Uh, if you're selected, what we're going to do is give some homework between the two weeks um, or so between when we announce the fellows and when the program begins. So some of that homework is going to be reading your other fellows um, projects so that you can familiarize yourself with them. Um, you're going to be hearing each other's pitches during this whole process, and it'll be really good for you to have that background. Um, we're going to ask you to read some of our, or to watch some of our full workshops of our virtual workshop series that we've been doing over the past year. There are some that we think are going to be really, really relevant um, for the writers to know before starting with this process. So we'll have you watch those. And um, we'll probably be having fellows practice their verbal pitch before the actual um, session starts so that you can come in right away with a pitch that we can then um, keep working on and working on during the session so that when you have meetings, you're really ready to go. But you don't need to write any additional episodes. Um, the only thing that you would kind of need to go into a pitch meeting is your pitch and your pilot episode script itself. And an, an idea of how it progresses too. And an idea of how it progresses. Um, okay. Rachel Ritchie says, are selected fellows guaranteed to pitch to at least one of the producers, companies, et cetera, that are participating? Again, we submit all of the log lines to all of the companies that are um, have signed on, um, HBO, Berlanti, Fable, Turn On Date, Good Fear, so many. Um, so we're going to have six, and they've each agreed to hear at least three of the pitch meetings. So if there are six to eight fellows, the, and we're looking for th um, half comedy, half drama, and we have comedy and drama represented at HBO, for, for example, chances are they're going to want to hear all three or four of the comedies, the comedy rep and the drama rep, chances are they're gonna wanna hear all three or four, but they're going to hear at least three of their genre. There are no absolute guarantees, but it seems highly unlikely that someone would walk away having had zero meetings if they were selected as a fellow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Clara asks, can we submit more than one script? Uh, yes, again, you can submit um, more than one, um, but they have to be in separate applications. Um, Bayan says, do scripts need to have a traditional four act structure with cold opens and tags, or can they be formatted with any amount of act choice? Um, we are not being strict about the structure uh, with the act breaks, but I will say that the script should capture the reader's attention in the first 10 pages. Um, it is very difficult when you're reading so many scripts, and this is just general advice for all writers. If there's nothing happening in the first 10 pages, except you're meeting the characters, um, it's very hard to stand out. Um, so I would definitely say like, you, you need some kind of teaser, you need a hook, you need an inciting incident in the first 10 pages to get the readers interested. Sue Clark asks, how important are bios? Is it all about the content screenplay? Um, we would definitely say there's a place to fill out a bio. So we would recommend filling out the bio. Um, sometimes it's interesting or helpful for us to just have more background on you as a writer and as a person. Um, sometimes your experiences in your bio, um, a unique job you had or something are really reflected in, in your pilot. And that's really interesting for us to see because we're like, wow, uh, they really know what they're talking about with this and they have all these details or sometimes, um, you know, you've won a lot of contests and you want to show that off to any other contest you enter. Sometimes um, 
it's just helpful to see and learn more about uh, learn more about you. But it's not, you know, we're we're equally considering uh, any application that doesn't have a bio. It's just always good to fill everything out. Um, Vanessa Skull asked, do you think that it helps or hurts or has no impact either way to include if you're also an actor in your bio? It does not impact your application at all. Um, it just matters if it has helped your writing. <laughs> Anna asks, if the script has already been received well and accepted into film festivals, etc. Would you recommend keeping as is or potentially tailoring it to meet the genre and tone of previously admitted material with by this organization? So we have nine um, different studios and production companies in addition to a couple other executive producers who are going to be hearing pitches. So it would really be hard to tailor it to all of them at once. They all kind of have different um, different things that they've made in the past, different things that they're looking for. Um, so I think you should, you know, submit it the way that you feel is the strongest version of this project. Um, it would be very, very hard to tailor it to everyone who could potentially hear your pitch. Kenyatta asks, will the group be meeting live or via Zoom? Um, I assume the fellows? They will be meeting uh, via Zoom. So this is all virtual and the pitches are all virtual as well. You do not have to fly anywhere to pitch. Uh, you can be anywhere just as long as you're going to be, um, you know, available during the times. If, if it's the middle of the night for you when we're going to be meeting or, you know, the pitches are going to be happening at any time of day, just whenever these execs are available, um, you know, Eastern or Pacific time typically, it's, um, that's when it is, but yes, it is going to be via Zoom. Um, okay, so um, Rachel Ritchie says, I am part of a writing duo and we'd love to submit to the program. My partner is starting at law school in the fall and they refuse to allow any schedule changes even for work. We discussed it since the rules state both parties must be present, um, available on the selected dates in case they are chosen. We figured out she should be able to attend every session but would be potentially 15 to 60 minutes late on the Thursday sessions, and I would just need to catch her up. Would this disqualify us from being eligible to apply or participate? Um, so as we mentioned earlier on, like one of our main goals is that you're networking with all these other writers who are rising up the ranks. And so that is one of the main reasons why we want you at every single session, you and your writing partner. It's very important to us that everyone is sharing feedback, everyone is learning from each other. Um, one of the big questions that people get asked during a um, pitch is what is your strength as a writer? And that's something that we are hoping that the fellows can answer for you during the process. Um, and so the answer is that yes, both writing partners do need to be present. Karen Ruby asks, are you looking for pilots that are ready to be sold? What if we are interested in being staffed? Is that a disadvantage? Hmm. So we're really looking for writers who are ready to be staffed, just full stop. And we are, um, I mean, these are pitch meetings. So um, it would be to your advantage, certainly to submit something that you feel is ready to be sold because the fellows are going to have that amazing opportunity to, you know, to pitch their pilots to people who are looking to purchase pilots. Yeah. Um, as we've heard from so many showrunners during our virtual workshop series, that you, in order to get hired in the room, you need to have an amazing pilot. And so that pilot might, even if it's the most amazing pilot ever, it might not get sold right away because maybe you're not a, a known entity or uh, they want to see you in the writer's room first. Um, but if that pilot is amazing, it will get you hired as a writer, hopefully. Um, so I think that's like the perfect attitude to have um, wanting to be staffed. Um, but that doesn't mean that 
uh, your pilot doesn't need to be excellent if that is your goal. Naïs asks, if my writing partner and I are unrepresented, will this intensive help us get representation before we pitch to executives? Um, so currently we're not including that as part of this process. It's possible that that's something that we will include in this accelerator in the future. Um, but right now the process is really focused on getting your pitch um, really, uh, really polished and getting you in front of these um, studios and producers and production companies. Yeah, but if you have a great meeting with Berlanti and you write to a representative and say, Berlanti was interested in my script and I'm unrepresented, you will have a very easy time getting a meeting with that representative. So um, it is not required, you're not required to have representation before applying for this or before going into those meetings. Candace P asks, when you say you're looking for writers ready to be staffed, do you mean as writers PA, writers assistant or staff writers? Um, any and all, we're looking for people who understand the format of a script, who understand how to write something with a beginning, middle and end that keeps you hooked, that gets you interested. People who are, who, who you know, can write something free of uh, grammar errors and typos, just people who, when we say ready to, um, you know, get a staff writing job or a um, support staff job, we mean these people who just like, with their talents and skills and knowledge of, you know, what a TV script is that you, you would succeed if you were offered a position like that. Um, we have no idea what opportunities might come of this, right? Like if, if someone, um, when you're in the semifinalist round, reads your script and they're looking for a writer's assistant or a writer's PA or a, you know, a script coordinator or what have you, or they're you know, thinking down the line about, you know, oh, I might have a staff writer position available. Like we really don't know what potential opportunities could come of this. So we're really looking for people who, if an opportunity was presented to them, would be ready to take that on. Let's see, Mariana asks, how do you feel about writing that integrates fantasy and or magic? Also, how do you feel about genres? We love all the genres. What we're really looking for is a unique voice, unique um, vision, something that we haven't seen before but also couched in um, a great understanding of the skill of screenwriting. So um, we love it when you, when you uh, do genre bending, um, anything that feels fresh and new, we love, um, but we, it all needs to be still within the structure of a pilot, well-written, et cetera. Yes, and we love dramedies as we mentioned oh. before. <laughs> Ray asks, do semi-finalists have the opportunity to make industry connections? So the semi-finalists are the ones whose scripts are going to be um, given to those industry judges for, um, for reviewing. So that's kind of where that opportunity lies. And then the selected fellows are the ones who are going to be um, participating in the intensive and having those pitch meetings. Yeah, and the industry judges that we have brought on they are, we specifically mentioned that like we want people, um, we are looking for industry judges who want to hire and refer new voices. So they are reading these scripts looking for people that would be good to hire and refer. Beloizu asks, are you aiming at a specific number of semifinalists or will it depend on the number of applications and quantity of applicants? We are aiming roughly for about 24. Um, that could change depending on how many applications we end up with in the end and how many industry judges we, um, we sign on. Um, every day we are getting more industry judges on board and we will be updating that on our website shortly, um, but we are aiming for about 24 semifinalists. Um, and we're really looking for these semifinalists to be, you know, for these scripts to be so strong that we're like, oh my God, we could see all of these people being successful as a fellow in the program. Like, how do we decide? And uh, for those judges to have that great outside eye, but we're looking for all those semifinals to be really, really strong. 
Tina Thompson asks, HBO Max has some really great adult animated projects. Are they not interested in hearing animation pitches for this program? Or does WWFC just have a rule about not accepting animation pilots? So that's more of a rule on our end. Um, we just as a, an organization have really focused on um, scripted live action film and TV in our film challenge and our virtual workshop series. And in um, this pilot accelerator, we want to focus on, on one thing and really do it the best that we can. Um, and yes, although HBO kind of has, uh, does have animated series, not all of the places do. So we're, we're really just focusing it in um, and, and doing, doing what we, we can do best. Uh, Bella says, can you tell us how secure our scripts will be since we're having our story read by already established artists, executives, and companies? And what happens to the non-selected scripts? We are only asking people that we trust, know and trust to read these scripts. Um, they're not going online or anything like that. We're not like farming out readers for this. Um, so we are only sending scripts to people that we would send our own work to. Um, what happens to non-selected scripts? Um, well, they're all just on Film Freeway when you submit them. And so we don't download anything. We don't have anything on our um, accounts or anything. So what happens is we review the script, we judge it, several people judge it. And um, if it ends up not um, scoring well, then, we, um, then it gets dismissed. And I think it just, just it, hangs out there. It just hangs out and on the film freeway uh, ether. I don't know. Claire asks, will you accept scripts that are based on public domain stories like fairy tales or novels that are no longer under copyright? Uh, yes, definitely. And there's a place in the application for you to let us know if it's based off of um, existing IP. And you can certainly mention there that it's in the public domain. Or if it, if it is something that's uh, based off of um, a book or whatever, you could say, hey, yeah, I wrote this book or I have already required the, acquired the rights or I have not or whatever. You can give us that information on the application. Um, let's see. Um, Ruthie Harris says, should we include act breaks or leave blank? You can include act breaks if you want. Um, the rules for pilot scripts with the act breaks are, um, not as um, held fast. So um, just keep it consistent, I would say. Like don't have the first act mentioned and then not have second or third or fourth act. Kins asks, is it safe to submit scripts that have already won prizes competitions? Would this help our chances even if small local competitions? Um, yes, you can submit scripts that have or have not um, won anything. And you can certainly mention that in your bio, or I think there's a place on Film Freeway where you can fill out awards. Um, again, we're really looking at the strength of the script. So we could very easily be very excited about something that has never won anything and you've never, you know, produce, gotten a film produced before or, a, you know, gotten a writing job. And we could end up not being too excited about a script that has all the awards in the world. So. It's really just based on, you know, we're looking at the strength of the script itself. Elizabeth asks, will there be another pilot accelerator in the future? This sounds like a great program, thank you. <laughs> but I don't think my project will be ready yet. We will definitely uh, have another one in the future. We're already really excited about this um, program. So we're excited about bringing it back in the future. So yes, look out for the next iteration of it. We're not sure when that would be. Um, but definitely keep an eye out on our email list, our social media website, all that, and you'll be the first to know. And definitely props to knowing when you are ready. Um, we, don't, we do not want to take people's money. We are just trying to run a program here. We want to advance careers of emerging writers and unrepresented voices. And so we really only want you submitting if you're absolutely, absolutely ready. So please, if you're not ready, if you feel like you need more people reading your script, getting more feedback, you need to review it for typos, now might not be the right time to submit this. Save your money and, and do it in the future, hopefully. 
All right, this is a really good question. Um, this also really helps us because this is the first time that we're running this program. And you know, we have a, an FAQ on our website and this just helps us to build that for the future so that we can answer everyone's questions more fully, um, address everyone's questions and concerns. And yeah, I'm, I also haven't been looking at the chat this whole time and I'm just seeing all these uh, really kind notes about this program and um, just thank you so much uh, for, for coming and for, for wanting to get involved in this. Um, yeah and for submitting your questions. We really appreciate it.